Bombers have proven to be a lasting and potent means of deterring external threats, a fact underscored by their recent use in the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. Their role cannot be overstated. Recognizing this importance, the United States Air Force has continuously advanced its bomber jets, ultimately commanding some of the most costly and powerful aircraft in its arsenal. In this exploration, we'll delve into the timeline of American bomber jets, tracking their evolution and highlighting the pinnacle of their development, a remarkable $3 billion jet. We will also journey through the history of these potent bombers that have contributed significantly to modern warfare. Join us as we explore how the U.S. tested its gigantic $3 billion bomber. When it comes to taking down enemy planes or disintegrating large military bases, bombers are the way to go. They played massive strategic and tactical roles in both World War I and II, contributing significantly to the victories of the Allied nations. There was even a secret American military project during World War II that turned out to be even more expensive than the $2 billion Manhattan Project, which developed U.S. atomic bombs. The $3 billion B-29 Superfortress was a massive four-engine bomber designed for long-distance flights to drop atomic bombs. The silver-skinned B-29 was powered by four enormous turbo-supercharged R-3350 duplex cyclone radial engines. These engines allowed the 37-ton aircraft, when empty, to fly at relatively high speeds, ranging from 290 to 350 miles per hour and at altitudes exceeding 30,000 feet. This made it extremely challenging for Japanese interceptors to catch up with them. However, as World War II continued towards its conclusion, the Air Force recognized that the Superfortress's advantages would soon diminish with the introduction of turbojet-powered fighters. As the Cold War gained momentum in the late 1940s, it became even more crucial for the Air Force to have a nuclear bomber capable of striking Russia from U.S. bases. All these needs led to the development of a new B-29D model. They cranked up the engine power by nearly 60%, using a 3,500 horsepower R-4360 Wasp Major engine and crafted the skin from a stronger but lighter 75S aluminum alloy. This reduced the weight of the wings by 600 pounds and boosted the speed to almost 400 miles per hour. They also added a taller tail fin, hydraulically assisted controls, and wing and window de-icing systems. However, after World War II, the B-29 orders were canceled. To salvage the program, the military rebranded the B-29D as the B-50, suggesting that the aircraft incorporated more original design features than it actually did. It's not the first or the last time misleading aircraft designations have been adopted for political reasons. They produced a small run of 60 B-50As in Washington, which became part of the newly formed Strategic Air Command's nuclear deterrence fleet in 1948. This was until the massive B-36 Peacemaker and B-47 Stratajet jet bombers could enter service. Later on, they built a few B-50Bs with lighter weight fuel cells, but eventually settled on the B-50D for larger scale production, totaling 222 bombers. The last model downsized the crew from 11 to 8 and had provisions for external fuel tanks. It also had a simplified nose cone and an integrated in-flight refueling boom. The B-50 fleet faced its fair share of teething issues, including defective pressure regulators, engine problems, and cracking in its aluminum skin, which took several years to resolve. Additionally, as the Pentagon continued to deploy new types of nuclear bombs rapidly, the B-50 bombers had to undergo multiple conversions to accommodate these bombs in their bomb bays. Since then, we've seen more development of bomber aircraft from around the world. One of them is the B-1B Lancer. It is a strategic bomber that made its debut in 1986. What's significant about the Lancer is its capacity to carry nuclear weapons. Moreover, this aircraft boasts a certain degree of stealthiness, enhanced by its comprehensive countermeasures systems, which enable it to navigate through even the most sophisticated enemy air defense systems. When it comes to firepower, the B-1B is a heavyweight, capable of hauling an impressive 34,000 kilograms of missiles or bombs internally. In fact, it can carry more payload than any other bomber in the U.S. arsenal. However, following the conclusion of the Cold War, its role shifted from nuclear strikes to conventional warfare. 
A total of 100 B-1B aircraft were manufactured, and currently around 70 of them are ready for operations at any given time. The plan is to keep these aircraft in service until at least 2030 when they will be succeeded by the next generation bomber. There's also the Tupolev Tu-160, also known as the Blackjack, by NATO. It had its origins in the Cold War era. This strategic bomber was designed to target some of the most critical American locations. To put it in perspective, it makes the similar-looking B-1B Lancer seem small in comparison, holding the title of being the largest and heaviest combat aircraft ever constructed. The Tu-160's payload is equipped to carry both cruise and land attack missiles, which can be armed with either conventional or nuclear warheads. In addition to missiles, this bomber can haul freefall bombs, with a maximum weight capacity of up to a whopping 40 tons, instead of the missiles. To top it off, it boasts an impressive range of 14,500 kilometers. It's estimated that no more than 39 of these aircraft were ever manufactured. Building and maintaining the bombers came at an exceptionally high cost. By the year 2017, Russia was operating only around 16 of these strategic bombers. However, as of 2022, satellite images have shown that only 10 of them are still in service, and it remains uncertain whether all of them are in flying condition. Though the Tupolev Tu-160 was expensive to make, it's not the most expensive bomber aircraft to exist. The United States, boasting the world's largest air force, has always recognized the importance of powerful bombers. And they don't mind if this power comes at a huge cost. Currently, they own the world's most expensive bomber, the B-2 Spirit, with a flyaway cost of $1.20 billion and a total cost exceeding $3 billion when maintenance is factored in. The B-2 Spirit is the only aircraft with acknowledged stealth capabilities, allowing it to transport heavy air-to-surface standoff weapons while maintaining its stealth configuration. Stealth provides easy penetration of enemy anti-aircraft defenses. The secret to its stealth lies in radar-absorbent materials, like a carbon-graphite composite, which reduces its infrared signature by absorbing radar beams that would typically detect such an aircraft. Remarkably, up to 80% of the B-2 is constructed using these composite materials. They not only have radar-absorbent properties, but are also incredibly strong, making them ideal for the B-2's dynamic nature. For instance, its wings have a higher degree of flex compared to regular airplanes, which helps absorb energy from aerodynamic stress, making it more efficient at high speeds. Its unique design is also wider than it is long, boasting a massive 172-foot wingspan while measuring only 69 feet in length. This clever packaging is another key reason for its stealthy nature. Radar cross-section is the measure of how detectable something is by radar, and the B-2's cross-section is incredibly tiny, just 1.1 square feet. To put that in perspective, cargo aircraft can have radar cross-sections as large as 100 square meters. This low-drag wing configuration not only minimizes its cross-section, but also enhances its range. The B-2 can cover over 11,000 kilometers, which is approximately 6,900 miles in one go. Plus, it can keep going thanks to its ability to be refueled mid-flight. Furthermore, the B-2's engines are buried deep in the fuselage to minimize heat detection by infrared systems. Infrared systems are used to spot the heat generated by an aircraft, both from its engines and the body itself, which heats up due to air friction. It doesn't rely on GPS for navigation as well. Instead, it uses a range of sensors, gyroscopes, and radars to help pilots recognize their location based on landmarks. This not only reduces the chances of being detected, but also enhances its survivability in case of a technical glitch. The Northrop Grumman B-2's primary mission is to carry and deploy ammunition. With dimensions that can be compared to half the length of a football field, the B-2 can carry a staggering amount of nuclear and conventional weaponry. It's officially rated to carry 18 tons, but it's likely capable of carrying even more if necessary. It had its first flight on July 17, 1989, and was officially introduced eight years later on January 1, 1997. Only 21 of these aircraft were ever produced, and they remain in active service primarily for the United States Air Force. One of the bomber's noteworthy updates in 2007 was the integration of two massive ordnance penetrator weapons, 
which are GPS guided and carry a whopping 5,300 pounds of explosive material. These are designed to target even the most heavily protected enemy compounds. However, as we said, the B-2 bomber is not cheap. Each aircraft cost approximately $737 million in 1997 dollars, which is around $1.2 billion when adjusted for today's currency. The entire development, testing, and deployment program cost an estimated $2.13 billion per aircraft, totaling around $3.5 billion in today's money. Despite its hefty price tag, it remains an invaluable asset in the U.S. military, with all 21 of its examples still in operation and plans to keep them flying until 2032. The level of maintenance required is staggering, with each hour of flight demanding 119 hours of maintenance, twice as much as the B-1B and B-52 bombers. Despite the capabilities of the celebrated B-2 Spirit stealth bomber, it has to be replaced in the future. Therefore, the U.S. Air Force has begun developing its replacement, the B-21 Raider. The B-21 will fill the same role as the B-2, but is expected to host a range of new top-secret technologies and weapon systems. The B-2 is the larger of the two, with a height of 17 feet, a length of 69 feet, and a wingspan of 172 feet. In contrast, the B-21 is expected to be smaller, with estimates suggesting a wingspan of no more than 140 feet and an overall length of no greater than 50 feet. These dimensions are based on calculations from a temporary shelter built for the B-21 in 2021 at Ellsworth Air Base. When it comes to performance, we don't have all the details about the B-21 yet, but we can make some educated guesses based on publicly available data about the B-2. The B-2 is powered by four General Electric F-118 GE100 turbofan engines, which can propel it to a max speed of around 626 miles per hour. It's intentionally kept just below the sound barrier to maintain its stealthy characteristics. The B-21 will have two turbofan engines produced by Pratt & Whitney, but we don't expect it to be significantly faster. However, the B-21 is designed for greater operational range, which is why it carries fewer munitions. It can hold just under 30,000 pounds of munitions, and this allows the B-21 to achieve impressive operational ranges without refueling, ensuring it can reach any target globally. Regarding service ceiling, the B-21 is expected to operate at higher altitudes than the B-2, which has a maximum service ceiling of 50,000 feet. This shift is likely due to advancements in ground-based air defense radar systems that can see higher than ever before. In case you didn't know, the mysterious paint used on these aircraft has quite a secret sauce. It's made up of several components that get mixed on site at maintenance hangars. This is done to protect the exact formula used as no single company makes all the parts of this special paint. The compositions of this paint were made secret because its job is to absorb radar radiation. Even then, engineers have faced the challenge of preventing heat buildup around the engine inlets and exhausts to avoid detection via infrared or heat-seeking sensors. To solve the inlet issue, they designed a serpentine S-structured inlet, placing the actual engine blades below the inlet. This design keeps the engine's heat from being detected. As for dealing with the heat coming from the exhausts, the team developed a system that mixes the hot exhaust air with the frigid ambient air, effectively reducing the exhaust's heat signature to match the environment's temperature. To ensure there's no visible vapor trail, they even added a system that injects a special chlorofluorosulfuric acid mixture into the exhaust plume. Now the B-21's stealth technology is still shrouded in mystery, but we can speculate on some changes. There may be even better radar absorbent paint, and the engineers may have come up with new composite materials that are stronger, lighter, or more cost-effective. These components are crucial for minimizing maintenance costs, a top priority for the Air Force. Talking about arsenal, we already know the B-2 can handle both nuclear and conventional weapons. For nuclear weapons, it carries the B-61 bomb, which is versatile, compact, and easily modified. Then there's the B-83 bomb, boasting a massive 1.2 megaton yield, designed for penetrating underground targets. The B-2 can carry up to 16 of these city-destroying weapons. On the conventional side, it can drop GPS-guided bombs, such as joint-directed attack munitions, making it a precision-strike powerhouse. 
But if you want something even more devastating, there's the GBU-57 Massive Ordnance Penetrator, a 30-000 pound bomb that's six times larger than standard bunker busters. This beast is specially designed for the B-2. Beyond bombs, the B-2 is equipped for long-range standoff fires. It can launch AGM-86 air-launched cruise missiles that deceive air defense systems by initially appearing as decoys. Then they surprise the enemy with a strike, either conventional or nuclear. It can also engage naval targets with the JAS-SM Extended Range Missile, boasting a range of 575 kilometers. It's quite versatile in terms of targets, even on the high seas. Looking ahead to the B-21, it's expected to carry some new and improved weapons, including the AGM-158 C Long Range Anti-Ship Missile LRAZM. This collaboration between the Navy and the Air Force is set to replace the aging Harpoon missile. The LRASM can seek targets at greater distances, boasts faster and more secure data links, and has a more potent engine, giving it an extended range over the Harpoon. That's not all. The B-21 will also introduce the AGM-181 Long Range Standoff Weapon, LRSO, replacing the AGM-86. The LRSO will be nuclear-armed with a W-80 low-yield warhead. Of course, the B-2 will continue its role with weapons like the JASM ER, serving in the conventional extended strike capacity. However, all these fancy weapons wouldn't mean much without robust combat systems. Both the B-2 and the B-21 are packed with state-of-the-art avionics, radar systems, software and communications equipment, making them some of the most sophisticated and self-reliant aircraft in the U.S. arsenal. Starting with the B-2, it utilizes a super-fast fly-by-wire system. The pilot gives commands which are converted into electrical signals ensuring precise and safe flight. Another game-changer is satellite communications. It allows the B-2 to communicate with satellites via secure data links, eliminating the limitations posed by ground towers and enabling global communication. The AN-APQ-181 Phased Array Radar is the linchpin for navigation and targeting on the B-2. It can operate in GPS-denied environments, providing pinpoint accuracy through various modes, including precise position and velocity updates. Also, it generates topographic photos of the terrain below, which come in handy for identifying targets and assessing damage after strikes. For targeting, the radar can switch to Synthetic Aperture Radar, or SR, mode. This mode captures high-quality topographic photos consistently, regardless of the aircraft's altitude. The photos are invaluable for target identification and damage assessment post-strike. Moving forward, there's the Radar-Aided Targeting System, also called RATS. It is a recent addition to the B-2's combat suite. While the B-2 could deploy conventional ordnance in GPS-denied environments, using GPS for nuclear weapons was considered risky. However, the RAT software program ensures that the B-2 can now deploy nuclear weapons with the same precision as conventional ones, without relying on GPS. Now, many specifics about the B-21 remain highly classified, but it's expected to retain many of the effective legacy systems. One notable difference will be its ability to carry out both manned and unmanned operations, giving it added versatility. Additionally, we have a bit of information about the cost and production of these formidable aircraft. The B-21 Raider finally took shape around 2009 when the Air Force began seeking endorsement for a new stealth bomber. By 2013 to 2014, it officially materialized as the Long Range Strike Bomber Program. After evaluating proposals from the defense industry, the Air Force awarded the contract to Northrop Grumman in 2015. One of the key reasons for Northrop Grumman's selection was the Department of Defense's firm, fixed price of $550 million per aircraft, regardless of inflation. Following the contract win, it took nearly seven years to build the first B-21, unveiled in December 2022. Although there have been minor scheduling setbacks, the program still aims to deliver at least 100 and possibly up to 200 B-21S to the Air Force. It's yet to establish an operational history since it's still in the testing phase, too, which is why most of its capabilities are shrouded in mystery. So the B-21 will be less expensive than the B-2 Spirit due to advancements in technology and production techniques. And it will also be better.
The B-2 program has already seen remarkable developments, and it remains unmatched in the skies. Enhancing this already legendary system ensures the B-21 will be a force to be reckoned with for decades, even after the last B-2 retires from service. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click on the link appearing on your screen to see another of our videos. You'll enjoy it too. See you there.